Okay, today I'm hitting you up with five. Count on one, two, three, four, five ways to use LEC or light emitting ceramic grow light technology. You're looking at 315 watts of joy here, but if you're still not sure exactly what's on your screen, then check out my other video here. So, five ways, let's go. First up, propagation. I'm starting a bunch of different seeds here on this 2x4 tray. I'm rocking the Grodan AOK Stonewall starter plugs, Rapid Rooters by Gen Hydro, and three varieties of cilantro in these planters filled with Cocoa Tech PX. <gasps> An awesome mix of premium grade Coca Coir and perlite that's perfect for seedlings, cuttings, and fast growing plants. Now, normally you wouldn't be able to see any of this because there'd be a big 8 lamp, 4 foot long T5 fixture getting in the way drawing upwards of 440 watts. Sure, for seedlings I would hang a multi-array T5 at 12 inches and probably only run half the lamps at first, but even so, you'd still have to keep a close eye on temperatures inside your propagators. Same goes if you opt for those single 2 foot lamps laid directly on top of the propagators. I think life is simpler with an LEC 315. You don't need to move the light in order to check in on the seedlings as it's a full 36 inches above them. Don't worry, I'm still achieving a healthy 100 micromoles for my baby tomatoes, but crucially with no excess heat building up in my propagators as the light is up high. You can see I'm measuring the temperature inside the propagator itself where it counts. The LEC 315 is connected directly to a segmental timer. This model has an integrated ballast. There's no need for a contactor and I run it for 16 hours a day. Being so high up, I can cover a lot of space for seedlings and cuttings. You can hook this puppy up to a light mover like this light rail by Gualala Robotics. Say that five times fast. And potentially cover an even larger area. I'd set up a 3 by 8 foot tray. Yes, with just 315 watts, but like I said, only if you were just propagating seedlings or cuttings. The reflector generates an impressive uniform spread of light, and I enjoy really healthy, vigorous, stress-free starts with this method. Ideally, I'd have reflector surfaces on both long sides of the tray. I'm using the 3100K lamp, which has a broader spectrum than the alternative 4200K, which is near to the classical metal halide blue. But what I really love is the increased UV. This toughens up my plants, and this is especially useful for herb crops, where aroma is a key quality factor. Plants fed a UV diet from the get-go indoors also adapt easily to use it for photosynthesis. Yes, there's more than one McCree curb, but I'll explain that bombshell another time. Check out my three varieties of cilantro here, confetti, slow bolt, and leisure. All this in just 10 days. Bountiful basement herbaceousness. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's move on. Quite chronologically to the vegetative state, my second and perhaps most obvious suggestion for putting these light-emitting ceramics to work. Should you swap the lamp out to a Philips Mastercolor 4200K or stick with the 3100? My plants seem happy with either, although the 4200 is arguably the ideal choice, rich in blue for tight internodal spaces and squat, easy to illuminate plants. If you go with the LEC 630, you could use both in the same fixture, although I love the vertical mounting in the LEC 315. It makes for a very kind diffused grow light, as I've mentioned in previous videos. Of course, as your plants grow, they need more light intensity. A healthy 300 micromoles is still easily achievable at a distance of 26 to 30 inches, and I can use the light rail to help easily cover this 2x4 tray, maybe even 2x6. Next up, flowering. Yes, you can use the LECs all the way through. Not many growers are doing this yet, but I urge you to give it a try. If you go this route, then just stick with the 3100K lamps from the get-go. Top your plants and spread them out with soft mesh netting. Low wide canopies are always important indoors, especially with lower wattage lamps. If you're growing for quality rather than quantity, LEC will truly deliver. Believe me. This brings us appositely to our fourth application, supplement the spectrum of your 1000 HPS. Try changing out 50% of your 1000 watt HPS lamps with LEC 630s. Fitted with full spectrum 3100K lamps, you can hang it at more or less the same height as your 1000 watt HPS lights and deliver a much fuller spectrum for a healthier, happier flowering period. If you want to make your buddies super jealous, then the Sun System Grow Beast does all this in one fixture. Check this out. It's a double-ended 1000 watt HPS in the middle with an LEC 315 on either side. And yes, before you ask, I've got one on order. It's kind of rude not to. Yeah. Okay, finally, let's talk finishing. Yes, you can buy specialist 10,000 Kelvin metal halide lamps for the final week before harvest. That's one way professional indoor herb growers, for instance, increase essential oils in their crops like mint and basil. But a light-emitting ceramic will produce plenty of UV too. Try swapping out your HPS lights for an LEC if you have one to spare. Unlikely, I know, as you'll probably be using it to veg up your next batch of juniors. Okay, there you have it. Five ways. We got there. Do check out the LECs. Lots of fixtures are coming onto the market now, but I'm loving the sun's systems gear because the hoods were designed and built around the lamp rather than the lamp being retrofitted into the existing reflector designs. The lamp in turn was created by some very, very clever folks at Philips specifically for horticulture. If you're rocking the LEC already, then hit me up in the comments. Same goes if you have questions, of course. Find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook too if you must, but don't forget to visit your real life friends once in a while and give them a bear hug. This is Everest, dedicated, caffeinated, and fully medicated saying peace out. <laughs>